on December the 8th, we've got a Gemini full moon, 16 degrees. The sun's 16 degrees Sag. Gemini full moons bring up alternatives. There's always two sides and maybe more. It presents a paradox that needs solving by adapting and integrating the parts. Kind of like an Ikea assemblage. And sometimes there's a few bits left over. This moon, it's conjunct retrograde Mars. We've got the culmination of a problem or a process. The culmination of some sort of inaction or confusion. You might be done talking. Or you might be ready to spill the tea. Reveal your anger, your ambition and your thoughts. Mars on the moon can be reactive and dramatic. But this time it's going to feel a bit odd or unnatural and uncomfortable to slip into that old way. If you're really out of your lane, Mars can express itself with an accident or an illness, a physical block. So you can slow down and reassess. Mars in Gemini can show up in your car, machines, your neighbourhood, siblings, your voice, movement, communication, the power of the written word, a battle with words and actions, stubbornness and procrastination. This means finding the right balance and poking at that balance like a bull with a lightning rod. Uranus is here in Taurus, quincunx the sun. Uranus is retrograde and still chasing the north node here. But this is the planet that's putting on the pressure and the tension, activating a restlessness and helping you find a way to integrate and adjust to all the recent upheavals. Shift a gear. The North Node pulls energy towards it and expands it, and then it spits it into a new phase. Uranus pointed at the sun like this is like an itch that's hard to scratch. You have to find your aim and your direction, even if all the pieces aren't in place yet. That tension is coming out in changes at work or in your finances and even physically in your body and literally the ground beneath your feet. This Gemini full moon culminates a cycle and wants you to lift the load, lift the frequency, get a new perspective and channel energy into an active solution. The Sag Sun is powered by hope and an uplifting vibe if you can tap into it. In the big picture, this quincunx with Uranus might bring out revelations, hypocrisy and problems, especially financial and political, for religious organisations. The sun being in Sag, the sign of the archer. The arrow is pointed at the galactic centre of the universe. Literally, 27 degrees Sag. The galactic centre is seen as an access point in the sky to all knowledge, like a gateway to the Akashic Records. It holds the space of a universal all that is. This moon, Venus is at 27 degrees Sag. So there's something in this adjustment that involves Venus' sense of self-worth, relationships, being graceful, using charm, negotiation and art instead of force. And in some way, this is creating upheaval that ties up a bunch from the past and you're reliving it now so that you can change its form and expectations. See it from another position. Get a really long distance point of view. Venus is conjunct Mercury, just here on the opposite side of the division there in Capricorn. Mercury in Capricorn puts a gravity and an authority into the conversations and communication. It presents a bottom line. You can't be a crazy optimist here. There's no overreach. It's all being called out. At the same time, Jupiter is square Venus and Mercury in Pisces. And Neptune's here also. This sets up more of that the buck stops here. Excess gets trimmed, limits are put in place, and something in your shadow self gets triggered. This is a bit bubble bursty, and it gives you a reality kick that levels the playing field. This combo can also look at social media, jobs, income agreements, and even embargoes and sanctions. It might be inhibiting, but it's helping you refine your footwork. Uranus can help shift the tension and disappointment of incompatibilities and put them in a new mindset with solutions. 
Then his self-worth is the anchor. And any imbalance, i.e. a poverty mentality, victimhood, or a sense of entitlement, will feel really low vibration, unacceptable. At the last moon phase with the Sag new moon, Mars square Neptune, dissolving boundaries, leaving protections open, and sogging up the atmosphere for all to see. In Australia, there were floods through Victoria and New South Wales. A 91-year-old man was trapped in his house as it floated off its foundations and down the street. He said to reporters, I've had a lot of training in being calm and collected and this sort of thing. So I just sang a few songs and did a bit of poetry. I didn't move out of the corner because who knows what was under the water. Even if he didn't know it, that comment is filled with references to Mars square Neptune. The Sun, Moon, Venus and Mercury were all conjunct in Sag. And it brought up a lot of big talk and a lot of social media hype. On the 25th of November, just after that new moon, Kanye West announced he was running for president. He met with Trump at Mar-a-Lago and invited him to be running mate. Trump started basically screaming at me at the table, telling me I'm going to lose. Has that ever worked out for anyone in history? The whole thing with Kanye West just gets stranger and stranger. Last moon, we also had a mystic rectangle. And Jupiter and Neptune were conjunct in Pisces, making it one of the luckiest times of the year. If you want more on that, watch my last video, The Sage New Moon. I go through more of the meaning behind the rectangle and why it's so amazing. The mystic rectangle is still active, but it sprung a leak with Neptune and Jupiter separating. Neptune still retrograde and Jupiter's about to move back into Aries. That's when negotiations are truly done and you'll be able to hone in your focus, feeling more prepared. Lilith and Pallas are here at 26 degrees Cancer, Ceres is at 26 degrees Virgo and Pluto is at 26 degrees Capricorn. This makes this combination really tight. And to me, it kind of squeezes pressure out through here on anything that was unrealistic or overinflated or where the frequency didn't match with your self-worth. With Lilith and Pallas so tightly opposite Pluto, it means we've got strategic defiance. There's a sense of justice and righteousness that can clearly see the way intimidation and power has been used against it. You might see where you've been manipulated or where you spoke the truth, you're not about to let it get buried. The gift that emerged for you over November and the resources that appeared now need to be rounded up and expressed with finality. Regeneration is already happening and you've got to cut off the dead wood to let it thrive. That means in this moon phase, with the full moon and culminations, you might have to make decisions about letting go of relationships and adjusting to new demands with grace. There's an element of justice that's coming through and you're more foot sure. Gemini is good at turning somersaults and seeing things from another side. There's a place now with this moon where all that adapting has found its groove. You know where you stand and it's much harder to pull the wool over your eyes. I'm Meryl Key, and this is my mystery school. Like, comment, share and subscribe. If you like this, watch my other videos on my channel or contact me through my website, www.merylkey.com. Thanks for watching. Blessed be.